What's going on guys? My name is Jordan. I'm a technician at Hall Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Virginia Beach, Virginia. And today I skipped work to come out to Virginia International Raceway because Dodge is putting on something pretty cool. They're part of the One Lap of America. So basically what they're doing is a 3,500 mile trip across eight states in seven days. And they're taking this EV charger and they're putting it through its paces on one set of tires. They're doing things like drag strips, drift events, time trials, uh, skid pads. And today they're out doing the time trial at VIR. So David Carr is going to be the one driving today. He's Dodge's vehicle dynamics engineer um, and our performance specialist. Uh, and so the charger that they have him in is the Stage 2 Scat Pack, uh, fully stock aside from where it's been kitted out with an entire roll cage. And I want to thank the guys at Dodge Garage for letting me come out and we'll take a look at this charger and watch them on the track and see the car in its natural habitat. Not bound by any kind of road laws, straight open, you know, stretches and really see what this car can do. I'm pretty excited. I don't know about you guys, but it's pretty cool to me. And after a couple of laps, David Carr is going to sit down and talk to me. And I have a couple of questions I want to ask him since he is one of the lead engineers of the vehicle. And they're going to let me poke around the car, sit in it, mess around, um, you know, just kind of hang out. So that way, you know, the car that I work on every day, I can kind of get a deeper understanding of and the people who worked on it. All right, so we're here with David Carr. He's the dynamics uh, engineer for Dodge. And so you're out doing the one lap of America. Um, and it's been pretty grueling. So you, know, you guys took the time to give me some, you know, ask some questions. Um, so I wanted to ask you a couple different things. Uh, but don't judge me for writing them down because you guys are on a time constraint. We're going to charge them before you get back to your next meet. Um, so yeah, let's ask you a couple questions about the car, how everything's been going, and kind of see where we go from there. Sure. So my first question for you is um, how's the charger performed um, on track, you know, compared to your expectations? You know, what you were thinking it would do versus what it has done. How's that worked out for you? I, I think it's been performing great. I mean, we've really been surprising a lot of our competitors out there who don't necessarily know a lot about the EV side of things, but we have a lot of torque, right? We have all-wheel drive. We have 670 horsepower, and this thing, it gets up and it moves on the autocross, mm -hmm. right? We're able to launch really well and get through the course pretty fast on the road course with all-wheel drive and the way we have it tuned. I'm really able to get on power and get that power delivery down immediately, right? Which helps my acceleration and speed so we can turn some really respectable lap times. Uh, as a whole, the car's been doing well and surprising a lot of people for, for what an EV can actually do. Yeah. Uh, so has there been one track in particular that's really jumped out at you or it kind of all blend together because each one is different? Yeah, I, I, honestly, I've liked them all for different reasons, right? We, we were at Gateway was one of the, the first road courses that we were at, and it was a tight, twisty course, and that really did well because we have a, a really good balance where you can roll into throttle and start to rotate the car a little bit, or you can lift throttle and rotate the car as well. So it's, it's got a very neutral balance to it, and that track really helped to showcase the, the nimbleness and the mm -hmm. agility that you have in this car. And then you've got tracks like VAR that we just got done with our first session. And that's a relatively high speed track and the car is pulling well down the straightaways and it's moving and going through the climbing S's, it's inspiring a lot of confidence. Uh, 
so let's see, NCM had a lot of curbing that we were able to use and show that the suspension on the tires can really handle a, a little bit of the abuse if you need to use the curbs, right, mm -hmm. to cut off the course to save a little bit of time, while some of our competitors, they have to usually avoid them, yeah. right, really low profile tires, have to worry about a rim strike or something, but this car, in its form, it, it handles well, the, the tires will go over the curbs, right? It stays settled, it stays planted, and it, it allows me to really position the car where I want to. So I like them all for different reasons. Yeah, okay. So my next one too is, uh, has it excelled in any particular event? And I know you guys haven't done drag yet, but you guys have done the skid pad, you've done autocross, and you're doing time trials right now. But out of those three, which one has kind of stood out to you as you know the car's kind of shiny moment? I think the one that seems to be surprising most people is probably the road course. Mm -hmm. uh, just being a bigger track overall, uh, the car has been keeping up with the competitors in our last uh, event. We wound up chasing down a, a C8 while we were out there, and uh, I'm sure that he wasn't quite expecting to see me start to fill up his rearview mirror. Yeah. Uh, the, the autocross, I, I think some people with the torque that this has might have had an expectation that it can do all right, but the, the road course really we seem to be getting a lot of feedback. Now, was that expected, or, or did that kind of surprise you? Or did you, you go into this knowing, yeah, I knew this car was going to do this, or did you get out and say, yeah, this is... You know, this is really impressing me. For, for me, the, the car is doing exactly as expected. Cool. Um, a, a little uh, unfair advantage here, having helped two in the car, right? Yeah. So uh, with, with the track back having some track development on it, I, I have a pretty good understanding of where it can shine. And really, this type of event, One Lap of America, perfectly suits this kind of car, Yeah. right? It does really great on the highway. It does great in an autocross. It handles road courses really well, especially if you need to use the curbs. A lot of torque, a lot of power, all-wheel drive. It's just easy to drive. So it hasn't really surprised me, but I'm also pretty familiar with the car. Yeah. All right. All right, so my next one is charging infrastructure, as we're here charging right now on a Level 3 charger. Um, so how's it held up through this trip? You know, you guys have done, it's what, 3,500 miles, eight states, if I'm not mistaken, uh, over seven days. So yeah. you've had a lot of time to go out on the road and, you know, test the uh, America's charging system. So how's that worked out for you? Really well, actually. Uh, we, we've been pretty fortunate uh, using the Uconnect navigation mm -hmm. and being able to plan our route and find fast chargers. So we'll put in our destination and we'll, we'll look and see where the fast chargers are. It'll show us fast chargers and slow chargers, but we wind up usually sorting by the fast chargers because we want to be able to continue our trip really, really quickly, right? Uh, and there's been a surprising amount of fast chargers that have allowed us to keep the pace that we wanted to. Um, th there's been a, a couple that are slower than expect and you just use those and you wind up getting just enough charge so you can find a faster charger. Mm -hmm. But there's been plenty of charges. We, we've yet to find an area, even going through the middle of nowhere from Kansas all the way to Kentucky, we, we've yet to find an area that doesn't have a charger yep. to so, support our needs. Now you mentioned to me earlier as we were talking, um, you know, some people would say it's an inconvenience to stop and charge, but you said that you had stopped at these places that have you know charging stations that you may not have never stopped before. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of opened your eyes, uh, you know, the places and things that you could see as you charge on your trips. Absolutely, yeah. I, I mean, normally with one, one lap of America or a long road trip in an ice car, you're, you're going to stop at a gas station, right? Maybe grab a quick bite and then you're going to keep moving down the road. With uh, EV charging, you're looking to find the best charger for your situation. In ours, it's finding a fast charger. Some of the areas that we found are not places that we normally would have stopped. And you, you go there and you're trying to charge from 20 to 80% to keep things fast. Uh, and you've got 20 or so minutes. To, to wind up using up and so you walk around at these stores at these places that you're at and you find out that they're very eclectic and really cool and yeah. yes it's off the beaten path and a few miles away but it's a store that's really enjoyable or it's a restaurant that has food that is amazing and you never would have stopped there and a normal ice vehicle because you would have just eaten gas station food and kept going yeah instead we're sitting there and we're charging for 20 30 minutes and checking new stuff out yeah that definitely seems like it would take you know the average road trip into much more enjoyable experience <laughs> overall you know it makes make the trip more fun so. absolutely and, and it's the experience that is absolutely different so uh, my next question too is cargo space you know this being a hatchback and you guys are packed out with all types of equipment i mean how has that influenced you know this entire this entire tour it's been pretty amazing. Yeah, the, I mean, we, we have tons of room, so much room that our competitors half jokingly have asked to borrow some of our space to, to help them out. And uh, the, the hidden hatch is actually really helpful as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, it, it makes it so accessible to get in there and get all of your tools or your tires or whatever you're packing away, your suitcase, your, your computer bags. Uh, it's It's been really, really useful. And honestly, we're not even fully utilizing all the cargo space. Yeah. But we have extra room even with all the stuff that we've brought. And you guys also, you know, almost have a full cage in there too. And the amount of equipment that you have is, is impressive with that cage. So, yeah. I mean, without that, 
the cargo space is amazing on this vehicle. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Um, and so my last question too is, what's what's it been like managing the you know the charging, the driving, you know, the, all of this demanding schedule that you guys have to keep up with? You know, what what has that been like? Uh, it's actually been kind of fun. Uh, we, we've been using it as a a bit of a strategy play, right? So instead of just driving and saying, okay, we're running low on fuel, we need to stop again. It's more of which charging station can I stop at that's going to get me where I want to go fastest, right? Or which one, which charging station has a fast charger and is near a restaurant that I might want. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, the strategy is definitely different than it is with a nice car. I mean, usually you want to find a way to tie in a food or a bathroom break or something fun with it just to make sure that you optimize your amount of time on the road. Uh, but I, I found it to be a, a fun strategy yeah. to play, really. Well, it sounds definitely like it's kept you guys busy, for, at least for that side of it, too. I mean, and oh, yeah. kept the fun with it, too. Uh, but I do have one one last question for you. It's kind of a bonus question. Um, the Frat Sonic exhaust, it's been kind of controversial. Uh, controversial. Um, you know, the government mandates that EVs produce some type of noise. Uh, but you, people might not know that you can turn it off. And so my question for you is, after a grueling day on the track and traveling, uh, how do you feel when you get in this and you can decompress by turning that off in stealth mode and just cruise in a super comfortable car? I mean, how, how has that been? Has that helped at all? That has helped immensely. That, that, that has been one of the standout features on this car. With the Frat Sonic exhaust when we're out there on track, we put it in track mode, we make it full loud, right? Yeah. Pe people love hearing it. It makes a lot of good noises and it's fun and it provides a little bit more feedback to the driving experience. But after a long day on the track, when we're ready to go on a transit and we're going to drive for 8 to 13 hours, yeah, we put the exhaust in stealth mode, we put the, the dampers in their full soft mode, and we're just floating down the highway. It's serene. It's yeah. very comfortable. It's an extremely relaxing. comfortable car. Absolutely. So. And and even outside of the general comfort that we have from the dampers and the springs and the tuning and the exhaust being quiet, the seats are really comfortable. And the amount of space that we have, I, I mean, we, we've, we've completely laid flat and gone to to sleep taking turns <laughs> while, while we drive, right? I mean, one of us will drive for an hour and a half or two while the other is laid completely fat, flat and super comfortable. Uh, it takes a nap and in an hour and a half, we do a driver rotation. Yeah. So the car's been great. It's been very relaxing on the transits, which is helping us to be refreshed when we get to the next track and we need to perform. Yeah, because you guys, I, mean, I think you mentioned earlier, you guys aren't running on very much sleep because you guys are constantly moving to get to your next event. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of miles you're putting down in seven days. So yeah, Absolutely, and the car's been handling it beautifully. Well. I mean, I think that's about it, and I really appreciate the time you guys have like given me to, to come and talk to you. I think that uh, you know, if people want to find out more, I think it's dodgegarage.com. They can go and they can follow follow through and keep up with this. And I think we're what day three or four of of the travels, right? We are day at VIR and headed to Pittsburgh next. Day five, <laughs> and so we've got another two, you know, another two days, uh, three days. Um, but yeah, so you know, dodgegarage.com. You guys can go check it out, and follow the vlog, and just keep up with everything that's going on. Absolutely. Um, and you know, the, like. This is uh this is pretty impressive to watch this car come out and do the things that it's doing. I think people are going to be you know very taken back once they see the capabilities that this vehicle's been able to to keep up with. So I really appreciate it though. Thank Absolutely. you so much for taking the time. Thank you. No, we're doing good. Okay, so here we are on the performance pages. You can see uh, the high voltage battery levels about at 88 percent charge, and the, the high voltage battery is at about 93 degrees Fahrenheit. Now. One of the things that we want to do for track use for sustained performance is we like to go into our race options and then we can go under our race prep and we have two different modes. We have a drag race and a track. What drag race will do is it will elevate the battery temperature depending on the ambient conditions so that you will have more total power because you have less resistance with a little bit higher temperature. But for track use like we're doing for One Lap of America, we like to go to the track mode when these conditions are met, I can activate race prep. Now, it gives you a couple of things to be aware of. Uh, you really need to be on a level two, preferably the uh, more powerful charger, the better. Mm -hmm. That way it has more capacity. Uh, and you are going to lose your, your climate and conditioning, right? Yeah. What it's going to do is it's going to take all of the creature comforts that you're used to to cool you down, and it's going to divert it to the battery, right? Because what we want to do is we want to do two primary things for sustained maximum performance on the track. We want to raise the state of charge and we want to lower the battery temperature because the further you go or the more power you're using, the more heat you generate. And if we can keep the battery cooler, we can run for longer and have an extended period of time at high performance. Mm -hmm. So our race prep under track mode really helps us to perform well for One Lap of America. 
where we have multiple sustained laps uh, at a really fast pace. It's awesome. And that's a wrap, guys. And I just want to say thanks to the team. You know, David, they're gearing up right now to head up to Pittsburgh for their next event. And Sean from DodgeGarage.com for letting me come out and watch these cars. Um, so, yeah, if you guys want to keep up with us, you know, head to DodgeGarage.com. You'll be able to follow everything that they're doing and see all the other events. Uh, the drag event coming up pretty soon is going to be pretty interesting to watch. Um, yeah, and so thanks again for watching, guys. Appreciate it.